And we have our last guest joining us right now. There she is, Agnes O'Connell. Thank you very much for joining us here at Winter Games 19, the Vice President of Marketing and Demand Gen at 360 Insights. I am going to jump off of the stage. Please introduce 360 Insights, um, not only just your role, but what the business does. And I'll come back for some Q&A after you share some of your plays for gathering target market insights. Well, thanks everyone. So impressed with the quality of the conversations throughout the day today. I'm Agnes Fatino O'Connell with 360 Insights. 360 Insights is a partner management company specializing in channel incentives and helping folks motivate, engage, and inspire uh, channel participants in different programs. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a couple of areas that in my past life and in my current role, we're looking to kind of understand and dig into the ICP data of target or focus accounts. Um, the first one, which I think has come up quite a bit today, which is really interesting, and there are a lot of unique ways to go about it, are really that self-attributed data and getting folks to kind of raise their hand and say, you know, hey, I'm Agnes and I'm in this market and here are my interests. Here is what I'm looking to solve for. Here are my current business challenges and any other information that you're looking to glean from them. Of course, you can, can tackle that with market research or other kind of um, interviews, which are all so powerful. But the way that we've approached it historically has been through gamified campaigns. Um, and I truly mean gamification in the truest sense. Um, it's always inspiring or a kind of um, awe-inspiring to me, perhaps, of what information someone will give you when you offer up an interesting reward or you know a chance to enter into something so what we've done is we've created really um creative campaigns around as an example march madness or the nhl playoffs or golf or um the, the football season as an example and folks come in through a platform and they, of course, pick their teams like you would in a DraftKings or in an ESPN bracket. But they also have the opportunity to answer what we would call kind of business building questions to help move up in the rankings. And it's incredible the amount of information people give you when they are on a leaderboard or want to kind of move up against other people. So while they come in thinking, oh, I'm participating in this you know, really interesting bracket, they're actually giving us so many interesting insights about themselves and their company. So as an example, we ran this in 22 um, at our prior company that has just been acquired by 360 Insights. And we ran it for the course of the NFL season, which is about 18 weeks. And every week we asked a few questions around what are the business challenges that you're facing for the following year? What are the current business challenges that you're facing? Where are you getting your market insights today? What events are you attending? How are your budgets changing? As it pertains to our business, what programs are you running? What sort of lift are you seeing from those programs? And all in all, throughout the course of the 18 weeks, we were able to gather about a uh, hundred and 20 answers from individuals who participated in the entire thing, which equated to about 4,000 or so pieces of data for us to then go through and really kind of um, sift through and understand broadly what our folks are interested in, what their challenge points were, and also allow us to line up our content around that, where we were putting our content, what shows we were going to, and what the business areas of focus were going to be for those specific products that they, these folks were interested in. So there's, there's something to be said for maybe going a little out of your comfort zone and thinking about a gamified campaign that is going to be exciting to the key participants, but also help you glean some really great information on the back end. And it was certainly powerful to us in my past life at HMI. Um, the second kind of playbook for gleaning data and insights on focus or target accounts for us has always been market research. And we've kind of approached market research in two ways. One, of course, around the actual market and what people are doing and, again, the challenges that they're facing and how they're thinking about solving those challenges in the future. But the other way we've approached it that's been uh, pretty powerful is what are the market research factors around the channels that, that the, the focus account that you have is serving? So as an example, again, in our prior life with HMI Performance Incentives, now a 360 Insights company, 
we wanted to look at how are manufacturers in the building material world um, looking at their business. And instead of wanting and going right directly to those manufacturers, we went to the customers that they serve, in this instance, distributors. And we essentially asked all of these different questions around the impact of how they're going to market that would have significance to the manufacturers, therefore understanding how manufacturers are ultimately going to make more money from distributors to help us then gain this relevant information on the manufacturers by, again, going kind of a channel below them. Um, and this was interesting for a few different reasons. One, you were then able to go back to your focus accounts with content and say, hey, you know, we have direct kind of voice of your customer feedback to give you. Please listen to us or, you know, please read this ebook or please kind of attend this webinar. Um, but also it really helped us understand a pulse of, well, how are, do these customers of these focus accounts buy? What are they focused on? Therefore, what will the manufacturer be focused on in the next 12 months or in the next 24 months? And then how do we serve a purpose in that overall kind of revenue trajectory for the company? The third pillar of understanding these focus accounts or ICPs for us has always been getting in with some subject matter experts or some partners that understand that market in a way that is far you know, better or more robust than you. Um, this can be done through associations that may be kind of gated or around the market that you're looking at, um, but certainly finding someone who makes a living, perhaps by consulting in that space, is I think worth the investment of really helping guide you, again, to what the challenges are that you're going to be able to serve. Who are the players to know? If you're going to make an investment in a space, where should you start? Um those sorts of spaces have been incredibly powerful for us and have certainly allowed us to then essentially create an ROI on the spend or shore up how, why, and where we were going to go after our focus accounts. Um, that was brief on my end, but those are at the highest level, my three that I would suggest or have looked at. That was awesome. You packed a lot into such a short time there. Uh, I was taking notes furiously as you were talking. Like, I love this idea around the gamified campaigns. I'm a sports fan like many zillions yeah. of people out there. So I think it's a lot of fun to just, you know, have a, a March Madness bracket. But then, you know, hey, you want some extra points to try and move up the leaderboard? Why don't you answer this question for us? It's so um, interesting how much data people are willing to give about themselves when it is, you know, not clearly that question. When you're really kind of layering it behind something else, Right. Um, it feels with the softer ask and people will give you so much data to then go, go sift really. Yeah. I'm curious. Do you find like a, uh, how could I word this? Like a concentration around specific people who are just, you know, heavily competitive and they're going to answer anything. Like, just give me 10 more points. I'm ready. Uh, versus, you know, so, uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at is there, is there like yeah. a very small uh, number of people who are answering everything or is it a diverse group that's giving you like a wide array of answers so you can make some judgments there? It's a pretty diverse group. And, and the examples I gave are really in the sports arena, but we also did this around spreading kindness during COVID. And it was the same idea, but every week we asked, hey, what is bringing joy to your life or what organizations are bringing joy to your life. And again, we got kind of the more intrinsic or softer side of, of people's emotional pull by doing that. Um, but A, gave us a ton of brand loyalty and B, kind of gave us this demographic of people that we might not have pulled during a more sports centric uh, campaign that isn't for everyone, to your point, or may not have the large appeal that something like that does. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you know, like you said, not everyone's going to love the NFL or yeah. something like that. So they might not be willing to engage. But if you talk to them about, I don't know, uh, issues of no, uh, climate change or something, then maybe it's like, hey, you know what? This is really important to me. I'm happy to answer anything you, you want to know. So uh, I love Certainly. that. It's just, it's such a fun way to do it. It's, yeah, it's gamified, right? So it makes it just more, I don't know, it's, it's less stuffy. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a, a follow up question for you around your second piece around market research. So this mm -hmm. was, this is awesome. So you're skipping over your buyers. Yeah. And you're going to your buyer's customers. Yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm curious how you, how do you figure it out? Like, so you've got your, you know who your buyers are, they're your target accounts. How do you figure out who they're servicing? Is it just yeah, kind of like in, intuitively, you know, because they're selling manufacturing, whatever. 
fill me in. So a bit of digging, right? Um, I'd say at the highest level, if you were to dig into some of the publicly traded companies in the space that you wanted Mark into or you want to kind of foray, um, you'll very quickly understand, you know, where the revenue channels are and then who to focus on from a customer standpoint. But I think broadly, if you can go after the persona that the company wants to target, not necessarily the one-to-one -one company, that insight enough, that insight alone will be enough to make someone say, oh, wow, hey, they, they get it, right? They're speaking my language. They're talking to the right people. They have some information here. Um, it, it's an interesting approach, I think. Um, I'm seeing, I think, more companies look at it that way of, of skipping kind of the focus and going to someone that might be a one-off in the channel. Um, it's there's a lot of information to be gleaned there that can be leveraged in a lot of different ways. Yeah, target market, target market insights, right? So you're yeah. going again. Uh, if you want to understand your buyer, uh, a great way to understand them is to figure out what buyers, problems buyers. they're trying to solve for their buyers. Right? Exactly. So, yeah, I, I love that. Um, you translated it. You mentioned uh, you know voice of uh, customer feedback, all of that. You've turned yeah. into content. What did you feed to the other parts of the org? Like, did you pass this over to the sales team and say, "Hey, we did all this listening on your your buyers customers." here's what you need to know in the sales process or is it kind of limited to the marketing team? No, this is a huge effort. So um, one, we actually went to market with a third party to help us go about this because doing market research as I think we can all attest to is really hard to do well. Um, yeah. And just even how you ask a question, right? I think we've all been through the survey monkey forums and said, wow, I, I don't even understand what they're asking me here, right? So the art of asking questions that are going to lead to great data from a sales and marketing use case is, you know, a skill set I would say go higher for. Um, so two, of course, then we get this robust set of data back. We work with our data analytics team, both externally and internally. And we say, what is this telling us? And then we turned that into a pretty substantial white paper um, and really ebook around, hey, here, here's the 10 pages of findings. We then boiled that back into an infographic. And that's really what we gave over to sales. We said, hey, here's all the pertinent things that if you're going into a call that you could kind of start to drop and really exude the credibility and the expertise that's going to set you apart, right? That's going to make someone say, this isn't just a SaaS vendor or you know, another company, this is a strategic advisor. And this is someone that I want to kind of understand and have a business relationship with. Um, so yeah, it was it was essentially an enablement campaign internally, once the results were boiled down. And then that ended up also being fed into our CSM or PM team um, at the time to also bring those insights to our existing clients on the back end. So not just kind of prospect facing. Yeah, I love that. Even, uh, you know, the enablement piece, I think, is, is kind of obvious. Like you want to make sure that your, mm -hmm. your team shows up on even if it's just an early discovery call and they kind of know a little bit more about what the buyers, what's making them tick, why they might be coming inbound, et cetera. But I love that you're taking it to the CSMs as well, because like, hey, this is our new customer. Here's their problems. <laughs> we already know mm -hmm. we've done all this research. Now, you know why they why they've invested in us, or at least you have some idea of what um, some of the issues they might be facing are. So you can help them overcome those using our products and services, right? So yeah, I love that. Yeah, I got one more question for was, you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say the other piece yeah. of it was also help fight churn, right? So if it was like, hey, yeah. there's a question with our executive team around this around this investment, it's like, hey, well, uh, uh, from our market research, here are a couple of things that we would say, you know, um, why you should make this investment per what you're seeing in your space. I love it. My last question for you. Um, going to SMEs. So uh, this is something that we do at Winter as well. So when we send our, yeah. our surveys out, we always ask, like, who are you listening to? Who's your influencer? Who do you care about in marketing, et cetera? We get a lot of the usual names, but then some new names pop up. So I'm curious, like, what, how do you identify your SMEs? I mean, it, some I, I think are pretty obvious, right? Like, okay, this person makes a living in the space. They're mm -hmm. a consultant here. They're very popular, whatever. We've heard about them before. But do you ask your buyers? You, how do you go and find who these... Um, who, who the influencers are, who they're listening to now, because they do tend to change over time. That's a great question. Um, so we're part, and again, a lot of this, I'm, I'm 90 days into 360 Insights. So the caveat is a lot of this is from our former company, HMI Performance Incentives. We were pretty ingrained into associations within our target markets. So we would go to kind of those head honchos, which are also SMEs in their own right in the verticals yeah. that they sit in and say, hey, who, who should we be listening to? Who are you guys thinking of for speakers at your next conferences? Who is coming to mind that might be, again, kind of ahead of the curve, maybe not working with all of our competitors, as an example, um, would be another way. And then of asking our customers, you know, pretty blatantly on ongoing calls, 
Hey, what are you listening to? What are you reading? That was, that's another big one. What newsletters are you looking at yeah. um, to help us shorten the list? I love that. Cause uh, the two you mentioned, like the podcast and the newsletters, they sneak up on you really fast. And all of a sudden yeah. there's like, wow, this Substack has like 30,000 subscribers in my space. I didn't hear about them until yesterday. You know, so there, there really is that like need to keep your finger on the pulse of who's the new, you know, the, the new shiny <laughs> influencer is yeah. who's uh, who's, you know, closing up all of the, all of the folks in your space. Agnes, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate yeah. it. And winter games, 19, um, vice president of marketing and demand gen at 360 insights. Thank you also for sharing some of your past experience as well. Cause I think it added a lot of color here. So appreciate it. Thanks coming. so much, Eric. Thanks everyone. Bye. Take care.